you did Jeet Kune Do. Uh, yes. You were an instructor as well. It was not just... Was. Yes. Mm. So I'm very much looking at trying to understand what it is that makes martial arts effective and, and vice versa. And many people are still clinging to some martial arts as effective and some of them are pretty much done. Like Aikido, very few right. people believe the effectiveness, mainly Aikido people <laughs> believe in it. But there's some like Bing Chun and uh, also Jeet Kune Do where people do believe that it's still an effective martial art. Yet, as much as I read into your biography, you became disillusioned by it. Correct. Yes. It's, it's also so weird for me because Bruce Lee was all about making things effective. And there's this moment, you realizing that there's something lacking in it. So could you tell us yes. about that? Sure. Um, I was drawn to Jeet Kune Do because I was looking for truth. I was looking for truth in martial arts. And I, and I, I was interested in what works and what doesn't in the context of, of just fighting. And the idea of Jeet Kune Do, which is a very utilitarian idea, even the motto itself um, you know, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, which is something right. that Bruce Lee had taken from Mao Zedong. But, but that utilitarian motto is appealed to me. And when I would see the articles written by Dan and Asano and other people, they talked about fighting in all four ranges. And I'd been in more than a few street fights as a kid where I had been taken down and just put in a headlock mm -hmm. and held down and beat up by, you know, wrestlers mm -hmm. or just kids that were better on the ground than me. So I knew that I needed that. And I also had, my father was always a boxing fan and I kind of grew up understanding that if you're going to fight with your hands and you're going to punch, then the delivery system is going to be most effective. It's going to be boxing based. So from the outside perspective, I was seeing people who were doing boxing. And when Bruce Lee incorporated boxing in the movies, that was of course way ahead of his time because up to that point it had been, as you know, mostly Chinese opera. Right. And so they had the boxing and they had the idea of needing to be able to fight at all ranges and fight on the ground. And they had the idea of having form follow function as opposed to the other way around, all of which right. I found appealing. What I discovered after becoming an instructor and doing it for a number of years is because their epistemology was lacking, that they had gone off track. And in addition to that, I just ran into a whole bunch of hypocrisy, which, which really bothered me. So they would... Right. You know, if you remember back in the day, Dan and Asano had a book called Absorb What is Useful. And it was filled with photographs, actually, with the Paul Vunak and there was some other um, of the original Kali instructor, Kali Academy instructors in there. And they'd have side-by-side -side comparisons of Shotokan karate stance and punches in comparison to Western boxing. And I, I think that was good. And I think that's educational. And that's the kind of thing you would do in any other field of human knowledge or any other science where we want to expand on what our ancestors have done and build the knowledge for the next generation. So I, I, I found that good. But the problem I discovered in Jeet Kune Do is where they had that. And then on, at the same time, they're adopting something like Penjok Silat, which was, if anything, even more ridiculous than Shotokan. Mm. And there was a disconnect there. Because they had a, uh, a certain affection for Southeast Asian martial arts or, you know, whatever the reasoning was, they weren't congruent with their own line of thinking. So that ultimately led to different philosophy from the other instructor that I was partnered with. And that's what prompted me initially to open up my first school, my own school. In terms of Jeet Kune Do, I just recently heard, I haven't seen it yet myself, that you 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 created a functionalized functionalized version of it. And No. No? Um, what, what that was, was when I first came out with my first set of videos, um, yeah. and I believe this was 1996, 97, I think it was about 1996 when they first mm. came out, and um, I, I titled them Functional Jeet Kune Do. Mm. Okay. And then if, if you see them, it, it's essentially, there are a couple movements that, techniques that would have come from Jeet Kune Do, in particular the straight blast, which, which we modified to more of a boxing blast. Mm. But basically what you're looking at is MMA. Okay. And I've always been careful <laughs> when I teach jujitsu, especially to make sure I give credit to my coaches. And, and my main coach, of course, I need to make sure I mention this, is Chris Howder, mm. who, who's been the one that gave me my black belt, one of the original American coaches. Mm. And then the people who first exposed me to it, men like Hickson and, and Fabio Santos that I mentioned. Mm. But when Hickson first gave me permission to teach, which was before I, I had had the privilege of meeting Chris, the one thing he asked is he said, don't call it anything else. Make sure it's, you call it Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So I mm. titled that series Functional Jeet Kune Do because I was trying to speak to that community sure. because yeah. that's where I'd come from and that's, that's what I felt comfortable talking about and that's kind of where just a lot of the language and what I was using was, was tied in with that community. 
Right. Um, right. But when I when I actually get down and say, okay, we're going to work on the ground, I, I, I'm going to say, when you want to learn ground fighting, you need to train Brazilian jiu-jitsu. This is from Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and this is from my mm-hmm. instructor, mm-hmm. Chris Howder or Hickson, and give credit where credit is due that way. I think that's very important. Right. Yeah, that, that's actually why I wanted to ask because I did not see that video and just just before I interviewed, like some hours before, I, somebody wrote me that oh, you should connect with uh, with Matt Thornton because he made some he made functional Jeet Kune For me, it was there was this question like, well, I I, did, I tried to function as a keto for a year and it, eventually I came to the conclusion which which we spoke already about. It just doesn't, in a sense, it doesn't really make sense. It's not fair. It's still in that narrow box of wanting to prove things rather than really picking up the best things which are out there. And, right. and I was just wondering, so did, did it really? I understand your, uh, I understand your question now. Um, and, and you're right. And I'm glad to hear you say that because I've seen people go through that pursuit of trying to functionalize Aikido or trying to functionalize Wing Chun. And it's always a bit quixotic because in the end, what you're going to end up with is what we're doing anyway. Right. You're going to end up doing some form of MMA. Right, right, right. Um, so as far as the Jeet Kune Do term, let me, let me explain it a little bit better from a slightly, in a slightly different way. Yeah. To this day, I believe that what we do at SBG is Jeet Kune Do right, in right. the sense of it is what Bruce Lee advocated for. Right, right, and I right. think what Bruce Lee advocated for in his writing and what you hear him talking about is right. what we do at SBG. Right. And so I actually do think we do functional Jeet Kune Do. Right. Having said all that, <laughs> um, it's not what you're going to find in most of the rest of the Jeet Kune Do community who's still right. doing hand trapping from Wing Chun and C-Lot sweeps and forms and mm-hmm. clicking sticks together in, in a very impractical way. So, right. 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 Uh, but, but that's why I don't use that term really anymore. It's not in my advertisements. You're not going to see it at the gym. But if somebody <laughs> were to ask me, hey, do you guys still teach Jeet Kune Do? And I, I yeah, you do, really, you know. Yeah. Nice. Could you give an advice to people who are having doubts about their martial arts who are questioning it? Because I do meet a lot of people from my channel who, who have these doubts and they're, they're just not sure what to do. How do you think they should handle that situation? There are. I think it's, it's really important to go back and ask yourself, why am I training? Mm-hmm. You know, why am I doing this? They should ask themselves, what are they really interested in, in learning? What are they inter- really interested in achieving? And if what they're really interested in achieving is something functional, mm-hmm. then and you come to the conclusion that what you're doing isn't functional, my advice would be let it go sooner rather than later. <laughs> and the yeah. sooner you let it go and you move on to something else, the happier you're going to be because mm-hmm. there's only so much time we have in the world. Now, mm-hmm. it was interesting. Before I came on to do this interview with you, Mm. I was watching a video that just came out of Hicks and Gracie teaching a scissor sweep. Okay. A scissor sweep is one of the first movements I ever learned in jujitsu. So I, I learned mm. that in like 1992 or some, whatever it was. Yeah. Mm. And I, I've been teaching it for 25 years. Yeah. And yet the de- there's a detail on there that he showed that I had never understood before. That's what <laughs> I love about jujitsu and that it's, yeah. it, there's the depth of it. And then I think to myself, how little time I have that, you know, by the time I eventually die and I'm, and I, that'll be when I stop doing jujitsu. But when that day happens, how much there would have been left, you know? So, mm-hmm. so what time really do I have to waste on something that's not functional? Yeah, I yeah. want, I want my, the what little time I have that's not spent with my family and my loved ones where mm. I'm doing my martial arts, I want that to be, I want to make that time value. I want to make that, that's precious time to me. I want to make as much use of that time as possible. So if that's how they feel about their life mm. and their martial art, then I would suggest let go of what you're doing sooner mm. rather than later. 